In a previous talk, we discussed a way to find the voltage across a capacitor in a first-order RC circuit. We started by using Kirchhoff's current law to write a first-order differential equation. Then, we solved the equation and found an expression for the capacitor voltage Vc of t over all time. In this talk, we're going to discuss a way to characterize the time it takes for voltages and currents to converge to a steady value in a first-order circuit, and we'll also cover how the circuit behaves after the voltages and currents reach a steady value. These topics will give you a way to visualize what a first-order circuit transient response looks like, and also an easy way to analyze a circuit with resistors, capacitors, and inductors once voltages and currents become steady. Let's start with the RC circuit covered in the last talk and assign specific values to the components in the circuit. Let's assign 12 volts to the source, 1 K ohm for the resistor, and 10 microfarads for the capacitor. Plugging these values into the equation for Vc of t for t greater than or equal to zero, we get Vc of t equals 12 minus 12 e to the minus 100 t. This equation describes the capacitor voltage after the switch is closed at t equals zero. Here's a plot of Vc of t. Let's make three points about this plot. First, notice that Vc starts at an initial value of zero volts. When we derived the equation, we figured out that the initial voltage was zero volts because the capacitor was initially uncharged when the switch was closed. Next, notice that the voltage changes exponentially. The voltage initially rises steeply and then starts to level off. Finally, notice that the voltage reaches what we'll call a final value. The voltage levels off at approximately 12 volts and remains there. In reality, the voltage never actually reaches exactly 12 volts over finite time, but if you take the limit as t goes to infinity for the equation for Vc of t, you'll see that Vc of t approaches 12 volts. For engineering design and analysis work, it's generally acceptable to say that Vc reaches 12 volts as a final value. So this is a way to visualize any first order circuit transient response. Voltages or currents start off at an initial value right after some sudden change of the circuit. Then there's an exponential change. And eventually, given enough time, the voltages and currents reach a final steady value. Let's take a closer look at the response. This plot shows voltage versus time for a first order circuit. Don't worry too much yet about the exact axes values. Just view this plot as voltage on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. A sudden change happens in the circuit at time zero. The voltage starts at an initial value and then exponentially changes and then levels off at some final value. We define the transient portion of the response between the time of the sudden change and the time when the voltage reaches a final value. It's a bit subjective to define exactly where the voltage reaches a final value, but we often assume that once the voltage has converged to 99% of the final value, it has reached the final value. Once reaching its final value, we say that the voltage has reached steady state. In fact, we can say that the entire circuit has reached steady state because all voltages and currents in the circuit reach steady state at the same time. In steady state, all voltages and currents have stopped changing and effectively look like constant DC values. Let's talk about how to characterize the time it takes for a circuit to reach steady state. Voltages and currents in first order circuits will all have an exponential term of the form e to the minus t over tau. We define tau to be the time constant in units of seconds. Tau characterizes the response time of the circuit, that is how rapidly the voltages and currents converge to a final value. At t equals five time constants, 
the voltages and currents in the circuit have converged to within 1% of their final values, or in other words, have made it 99% of the way to their final values. You can see this if you plug t equals 5 tau into the expression e to the minus t over tau. Setting t equals 5 tau, we get e to the minus 5 tau over tau, which is e to the minus 5, which is 0.007 or 0.7 percent, which is less than 1 percent. This means the exponential has converged to within 1 percent. Strictly speaking, an exponential converges to exactly 1 percent at about 4.6 time constants, but it's conventional to round this up to 5 time constants. So, after 5 time constants have passed since the sudden change in a first order circuit, we say the circuit has reached steady state. This is why I show the time axis as t over tau in the plot above. What really matters in determining how much a transient has converged is t in comparison to tau. So when t over tau equals 5, steady state has been reached. The plot above shows a voltage or current exponentially rising from an initial value to a final value. It's also the case that a voltage or current can start at an initial value and fall to a final value. But the same definitions apply. The exponential fall is called a transient, and we say steady state has been reached when the values reach within 1% of their final values. Although not shown here on the plots, note that neither the initial nor the final value need to be zero. That is, a voltage or current in a first order circuit can start at a non-zero initial value and change to a different non-zero final value. Let's consider the RC circuit we worked and look at how to determine the time constant from the equation and component values. The equation for Vc of t has an exponential term e to the minus t over RC. We can equate this term to e to the minus t over tau to determine the value of tau. For a series resistor and capacitor, the time constant is R times C. We can also determine the time constant from the equation that has the values plugged in. We equate e to the minus 100t to e to the minus t over tau. The time constant is 1 over 100, or 10 milliseconds. This is the same value you would get by multiplying R times C, or 1 k ohms times 10 microfarads. We can use this value to indicate where steady state occurs on the VC plot. 5 tau is 50 milliseconds, and you can see on the plot that the voltage has approximately converged to its final value of 12 volts at 50 milliseconds. Prior to this time, the voltage is changing. After this time, the voltage is approximately constant. Oftentimes, it's useful to determine the values of voltages and currents in steady state. After a circuit has reached steady state, we can make some simple assumptions to analyze the circuit to solve for voltages and currents. Remember that a capacitor's current is C dvdt. In steady state, the voltage is constant, so the derivative dvdt is zero. This means that the current I is also zero. Because I is zero, the capacitor can be replaced with an open circuit for the purposes of analysis in the steady state. That is, in DC steady state, the capacitor behaves just like an open. A similar assumption can be made for an inductor. Remember that the voltage across an inductor is L di dt. In steady state, the current is constant, so the derivative di dt is zero. This means that the voltage V is also zero. Because V is zero, the inductor can be replaced by a short. In steady state, an inductor behaves like, and is equivalent to, a short. 
Let's use these assumptions to solve a steady state problem. This circuit has resistors, a capacitor, and an inductor. It's actually a second order circuit, but it's a good way to show how to handle capacitors and inductors in one problem when solving for values at steady state. Let's find the voltage VC of T long after the switch is closed and the circuit has reached steady state. Here's the circuit redrawn using the steady state assumptions for the capacitor and the inductor. I've replaced the capacitor with an open and the inductor with a short. The resulting circuit is a source with two series resistors. The voltage VC of T is the same as the voltage across the resistor R1. I can use voltage division to find that voltage. VC of T equals VS times R1 over R1 plus R2. So VC of T equals 36 times 8,000 over 8,000 plus 4,000. So in steady state, long after the switch was closed, the voltage across the capacitor VC is 24 volts. Let's cover some takeaways from this talk. The transient response of a first order circuit consists of an initial value, an exponential change, and a steady state or final value. The time duration of the exponential change is characterized using a time constant. The shorter the time constant, the faster the convergence to a final value. Once voltages and currents converge to nearly constant values after approximately five time constants, or five tau, steady state is reached. All voltages and currents in the circuit stop changing at the same time. In steady state, voltages and currents can be analyzed by replacing capacitors with opens and inductors with shorts. We can do this because when voltage across a capacitor is constant, its current is zero. Likewise, when current through an inductor is constant, its voltage is zero. With this knowledge of first order circuits, you'll be able to model the behavior and response time of RC and RL circuits. As you use and study more about first order circuits, these concepts will help you better understand the responses of electrical filters and even electromechanical systems.